And once again, we're thrown in with no context or objectives. Although, let's be real, it's not like I was expecting anything different. Hello everyone, and welcome to Hendicad, another game from the same creator as Cement Mixer Simulator 2003. And much like myself, it seems like a lot of you were really fascinated with that experience. It was such a surreal little game, all packed into the package of something seemingly posing as another one of those German job simulators. And of course, once you download it and install it, you'll see that it's pretty much anything but. Actually, I can't tell if it's anything like, either. Now, a lot of you wanted me to play more because just the way it worked, that long hallway, that several long hallways of unopenable doors, it all gave the impression that we were always just inches away from discovering so much more, from figuring out what it's all about. And the thing is, I I'm not sure it is. I'm not sure that's the case, because some of you dug into the game's files and found that, while yes, there are actually a number of additional maps in there, I had actually seen every level transition that's coded into the game. Which only serves to add to the mystery somewhat, because yes, we can confirm that there are other maps included, but seemingly no way to reach them. It was just the kind of thing that's so deeply unsatisfying to your brain, and you feel like you have to make sense of it, like you have to know more, that it has to all be going somewhere, leading you to some kind of conclusion. And it always dangled things in front of you that seemed to make just enough sense to make you think that they're connected somehow, that there's some overarching idea that it's trying to lead you towards, and it just never does. In a way, I could almost liken it to when you have a dream that feels so deep and meaningful in the moment, and then when you wake up, you're trying to put it together and you realize it's just nonsense. Yeah, but maybe this will be different. Ooh! Now we can zoom in. A little more functionality in this one. Oh, look at this. Small groups of houses out in an endless white void, all standing on top of what looks like wood flooring. Meanwhile, inside this one is... It almost looks like it's been turned inside out, with a roof and a chimney facing inward and a grass and stone path growing up in the middle like there's a garden. Also, the house number is on the inside as well. Yeah, it really is, in every sense, an inverted house. Somebody commented, uh, I don't remember if it was on the Discord or on YouTube, that Cement Mixer Simulator 2003 actually kind of felt like a surreal 3D painting that you could walk around in. And, you know, looking at it from that perspective, I certainly see what you meant. A quick Google search explains that Hendicad is a word meaning groups of eleven. So I wonder if that'll have some kind of bearing on what's going on here. Although, I, I can already feel myself falling into that same trap that I fell into in Cement Mixer. Because I, I don't know if this is something that's meant to be understood. I think maybe it is actually supposed to be just a surreal artwork that you can interact with and walk around in. But I just have the kind of brain that can't really accept that. I need to make sense of what's in front of me. I have to feel like there's some kind of logic to it, something to find, something more that it wants me to see. Uh, no wonder this house was so expensive. It's got a lot more property extending down below. There's a whole lot more of these fountains down below as well. And this one's been broken. Uh, before I head downward, though, I'm going to continue exploring this neighborhood. I think one of the easiest ways to achieve a dreamlike setting is to just place textures where they don't belong. So, for example, here you see a simple inversion. Inside this house, you have a floor made of grass. And outside, you have a sprawling landscape that's made entirely out of wood. And so, in that way, 
You have an image here that's comprised entirely of familiar things, and yet every individual component is somehow something that you've never seen before. It's almost the kind of thing where you don't realize how surreal it is until you really start to look at it. I mean, yes, you recognize that it's a weird image, but you gotta really think about, like, oh wow, I've never seen a wood floor outside before. Well, let's see what's going on over at the neighbor's house. Ah. I see they too have opted for the indoor party patio. Uh, this is number 8. I wonder if there will be any significance in number 11. Ah, oh, dude, you got weeds growing out of your chimney. That's not good. That's poor ventilation. Hmm. Were you fiddling with a radio? Now, that looks like a mushroom cloud in your tea. Wait. And I call it a loose connection between ideas, but... Now that I've thought of the mushroom cloud image... This feels kind of like a 1950s nuketown, doesn't it? Almost like it's a place that's been blasted off the map into some new reality. What's going on over here? Ooh, this guy's got a whole park going on. This is number nine. Ooh, this guy's got a river running through his. Although, where does that drainage actually come out? <laughs> that doesn't seem logical. Clearly, there's a homeowners association at play here because they're all doing a pretty similar thing with their interiors. Although, I will admit, it's a pretty nice thing. The only question is, where do they sleep? Actually, being able to sleep on the dense, matted grass by the riverside indoors seems like the best of all kinds of worlds in my book. Now, what's going on with the paint in the corner? Oh, come on, you're gonna stop right there? Absolutely lazy. You're so close. You're gonna do all that and then walk away? <laughs> God, why is this the most frustrating thing about this entire world so far? Maybe next door we'll have something else to say. Ah, the river continues through! Now I know there's a homeowners association because this was clearly a collaborative effort. Ah, it's like... This is like the horse costume of houses. Where it takes several to put the whole thing together. And much like the previous game Cement Mixer, I'm noticing a lot of common through lines. For example, these milk bottles that seem to be scattered all over the place. Now this is three. I'm not noticing a whole lot of logic to the, uh, to the numbering. Seems to be kind of random. Why is the ground wet in front of these... Oh, it's snowy inside! And it's melting out onto the wood, making it reflective. I, I have to wonder if these are images based on the creator's dreams. Because Cement Mixer, given the title, given the, given the itch.io page, it kind of felt like trolling, but this... I, I don't know, the whole thing seems... inspired, not just an attempt to piss people like me off trying to make sense of it. I, something about this guy's arms, I just do not trust him at all. He looks like a raccoon plotting something. Anything behind the bushes? No. As far as I can tell from the readme, the only additional functionality to this over Cement Mixer is the ability to right-click and zoom in. Now, I'm not sure which of these came after. I think this came after. And also, I believe there's been an engine shift. E even though it looks very much the same, uh, this is on Unity, where I think Cement Mixer was on, uh, was on Unreal. Ah, this house has got proper ventilation. I didn't mean to do that! Okay, note to self, the level transitions can be anywhere. 
Uh, is there any way for me to get back? Uh, there was still another house that I hadn't explored yet, the one with the snowed-in doorway. Oh. Where in the previous game, pressing escape just closed it now. Now we actually have something of a menu, where we do have a reset level button. But I'm going to push forward. I, I want to see if there's any connectivity between the parts. Hmm. An overturned chair. What might someone have been doing with this out here? There's something so nice, though, about a crisp white landscape underneath an orange sky of a setting sun. There's more chairs in the distance. Wait, what's this over here in the woods? The trees are too dense to walk through for the most part, but that just means that anywhere there's a divot, I should investigate because it's probably intentional. Hmm. Do these markings mean something? Oh, there's a whole path back here. Uh, can I go the other way? I can. Uh, this leads us over to here. It's an overturned wardrobe full of snow. It's like a whole bunch of... It's like a whole bunch of furniture has just been dumped along this trail. Or maybe they came to watch this beautiful sunset, although... I can't actually identify where the sun is. Oh, look at that white void over the edge of the cliff. Uh, I'm gonna go back and follow those wooden boards, see where they lead. Because they seem to be running opposite to the direction of the path. Even though they're just kind of like random mishmashes of lines, I, I can't help but feel that I see like, beings in them? Like, those to me look like ears on top of a weird head, and what maybe looks like eyes and a mouth and all that? Now this is much more clear. I get the feeling that standing on those planks will be a level transition, and I can jump through here. There's more. See, I I've got to assume that there's no accidents. Hello. On the back is the same building, but... It's like there's silhouettes of figures in the windows and in the door. Carrying over from the previous game, I have to assume that any time I can get myself out of a level's bounds, it's intentional, because every time I did it in Cement Mixer, there was something to see. Oh, this is so cool. I love it when my curiosity is rewarded. Uh, but, you know, much like Cement Mixer, it's rewarded but not. Like, every time I go and explore, I find something off the beaten path. But that something doesn't really give me any kind of answers. It always just gives me more fuel for my curiosity. Like, it's ramping up my desire to know more, but... In the end, it's giving that desire nowhere to go. Can I walk on this frozen lake? No, there's an invisible wall, sadly. The forest is much more... Open here, that startled me. Hello, guys? Oh, they're like person-sized metal cages. Like you'd be closed into one and be totally unable to move. Once again, all positioned in front of a cliff. Where are you taking me? Through this narrow path through the trees? 
Are you related to the ones who set up those drawings on the boards? What is all this? Oh, these are these are carpets and there's some that have been rolled up over here. Oh, it's throwing all these symbols at me and I just don't know what they mean. This was all covering up another frozen... Down there! Down there! I think that's the building through the trees that we saw on those boards. Okay, you can't just do this to me. There's got to be some way to get down there. You can't just keep showing me all these seemingly connected images and then not do anything with them. And this is what I've always been talking about. It's showing me just enough of a common through line that it makes me feel like there must be some logic to it, that there must be something that it's trying to show me, something to figure out, but in the end, there's just nothing. Oh, a gate. And what looks like some kind of... igloo? Sorry, just investigating every nook and cranny before I move on. Oh, there is so much to this space. So much to explore. Okay, let's try the gate. Because knowing me, I'm going to keep getting sidetracked and just forget about everything behind me. I just want to be thorough because I know that at any time I can be sucked through a level transition. It's like I've wandered into the polar bear exhibit. Actually, for that matter, that might be what's on the gate. And its eye is another weird symbol, which I imagine I won't be learning the meaning of. Can I get into here, anyway? What is this? It's like a spilled bowl of some purple substance? Why are you facing away from me? You've got the same shifty hands as the other guy. I don't trust these polar bears one bit. Ooh, snow elephants. Ah, oh, this whole thing is so pretty. And once more, the soundtrack is very soothing. It's the kind of thing where, you know, for as loud and honestly kind of intrusive as it is, I mean, the editing is going to be really hard to get it mixed with my voice. Oh, hello, it's a rabid. Uh, it's honestly the kind of thing that you might not even notice until you decide to focus on it. It's very weird. It's actually kind of similar to uh, what Didascus has said about the soundtracks he makes for his maps. snow tunnel, shaped like some kind of snake or fish. Child me would have been really stoked on this, but I'm a little bit afraid. Oh, this is going on for quite a ways. And out we go. Oh, and we're on the other side of that broken bridge. Wait. So, oh, wait, so that means that that snow must have been packed very, very tight for us to walk over it without falling through. Anything through here? Now there's another image I haven't seen before. It's like this tree has died and decayed Revealing a skeleton within its nettles. What happened? Oh, I should have known it was a signal of the apocalypse. A red sun behind a twisted metal tower. 
amidst a shallow purple ocean. Where do these bird walks lead? Uh, the draw distance is only just showing us some things on the periphery of what we can see. Actually, we can see more in our peripheral vision. That's odd. And that sounded very much like a choir boy in the soundtrack. That was very oddly disturbing. A tone that sounded very much like vocals. A flower? Oh, but I can't jump onto it. I probably shouldn't anyway, considering it would probably be a level transition, if anything. With the way these boardwalks twist back and forth on each other with all these redundant pathways, and seemingly a number of dead ends as well, from this place, I just get such a feeling of being lost. Like, even though we can see just fine, the sky is totally black as if it were night. The only light in the sky is that red sun, but it doesn't seem to be shading the world. Like, the light that we're seeing isn't influenced by it at all. I can't find any way to get to the other areas that we can see in the distance. Maybe... Oh wait, maybe this way. Okay. Ah, oh, all these twisted sculptures coming out of the water. It's actually really creepy. You, you know what it actually sort of is reminding me of? So years ago, I was at Disney Springs in Florida. I think they call it... Or I don't know if they used to call it Boardwalk Disney and now it's Disney Springs. But anyway, we were there and they had this Lego store. And outside the Lego store, right by the water, they had this big Lego dragon just coming out of the water. And something about it was just really, really creepy to me. Knowing that for as tall as this thing is above the waterline, there's so much more beneath. And the fact that I saw it at night didn't help either, so it was being lit from below by all these lights on the, on the edge of the boardwalk. We can actually walk up to this one. And with the way it forms an arch, I'm imagining this is going to be our way out. What are those things? We're being watched from above by what looks like some horned creatures? And... Hang on. Those yellow scaly looking guys... Uh, they sort of remind me of... The dudes in the apartments wearing the robes in Cement Mixer. Don't you see the resemblance? Those pointy heads in yellow scales? Yeah, this one appears to be getting preyed upon by some kind of... Strange under ice mollusk. Uh, now we're starting to see the still-life models that we saw in the previous game. Yeah, that was a weird thing about Cement Mixer, was that it was actually much more than this, full of what looked to be living things, but they were all completely still, as if time was frozen, which I think really adds to the idea of it being a kind of interactive still-life painting. Oh! Uh, we actually have a pretty crazy jump here. Uh, maybe we can use that to get onto one of these platforms? Yeah. It looks like we can start with this and maybe work our way up there and figure out who it is that's watching us. When we zoom in, that image actually sort of reminds me of, uh... So I was always a PlayStation kid. I was a PlayStation and PC kid, so I don't know which game it's from. But there's some Mario game where it takes place in, like, a valley at night. 
and you can actually look up on the mountains and see what looks like silhouetted beings watching you from above. It's super creepy. I guess I'll throw a screenshot up on the screen. What are you guys? Oh, you're like those things, but just made out of ice. Now remember, I said before, it looks like they're being preyed on by these weird crustaceans or mollusks that come up from underneath the ice. It's really weird how when you're given all these images, but like repeat images that you see over and over again, even though they haven't done anything, you kind of start to come up with a whole story and characterizations for them. Right, it's got a running jump up and over. It's a really good thing there was a bridge here. Uh, suspended over a void of nothing leading off into the sun. The sun which seems to be setting as we walk closer towards it. I don't know if that's just an optical illusion with the bridge leveling out. But it's a cool effect nevertheless. Ah, it's another snow elephant. Uh, is this perhaps our ticket back? Maybe we can climb in through the trunk somehow? No, it doesn't look like it. Maybe if we get on top. Nothing here. Uh, well, before I leap into the void, is there anything else I can try? Oh, there is a way in. These actually- wait. I don't think these are made of ice. I think they're hollowed out. Is this what becomes of those scaly creatures after the mollusks finish eating them? A staircase down into the dark. Hmm. It's one of you guys. Uh and we can't get back in. That was how you get into this house, so I, I wouldn't have been able to look at it anyway. Oh, that is so cool. I I'm having so much fun learning how everything connects. I in that way, well, in that way, I guess I'm getting a little bit more satisfaction than I got out of Cement Mixer. All right, well, I, I guess the next thing to try would be to see what's in the basement of our own house. Wait, this isn't our own house. This is the guy next door. All right, what's in the basement of the guy next door's house? I guess table storage. I guess this is the designated guy who hosts the block parties every summer. But what's down here? I, I wonder if this connects to my own basement at all. Oh. Oh, it's like a whole underground, like, office or business center, almost. Is that camera making sure nobody steals this can? What's in the trash? A folder. What are you guys? You guys are new, and... Actually, you guys are kind of like an amalgamation of the Beaky Face dudes and the scaly dudes from Cement Mixer. Yeah, you're kind of a combination of the two in that you've got that scaly skin and that bird-like face. But you've also got the long nose and you're performing mundane tasks. In fact, I believe one of the positions you could find the Beaky Face dudes in was actually typing at a computer and maybe even there were some typewriters as well. And I see you've also brought over that weird alien language. Oh, hello. <laughs> uh, sleeping under a desk at work. I feel you, buddy. I feel you. How's our jump here? Our jump is more normal. That's sad. That super jump would have allowed us to reach new heights, as the office types would say. Uh, this seems to be some kind of break room. I guess they must be very protective over those cans. 
To be fair, who doesn't get annoyed with coworkers stealing your lunch out of the fridge? Uh, this cactus appears to have grown up through the floor, actually penetrating the entire building. Uh, you wanted to see me, sir? I'm so curious to see if this is all going to connect to the basement of my own house. Ah, I see this is the drawer where we keep all the chewed paper. And somebody is doing some very impressive work with the documents that were supposed to be sent out last Tuesday. <laughs> Mondays, am I right? Enjoy your lunch, it's the only time off you get. <laughs> I love how he's eating it with a little, like, trowel. That seems difficult, given the width of the trowel compared to the width of the can. Oh, <laughs> I was standing at an angle. I thought he was actually wearing a super cool set of shades from here. <laughs> actually, doesn't he look kind of like Woodstock? Now, I can't help but notice... As we make the transition to the area that I believe is more under my house, the vegetation has changed. Clearly, our opposing corporations have different decor ideas. Yeah, I relate. Oh, look. <laughs> this guy's totally given up. The firing might actually be worth it. And then again, it seems like the entire company is in mutiny if this is what we're doing with the file cabinets. Or maybe they were cooking the books on a large enough scale that they had to get rid of it in a hurry. And they're going to try and pass off the cabinets as having always been empty. This guy is in imminent danger. Oh, I get it. Uh, the other guy is banging his head on the wall, causing this to fall down. Okay, so this is actually kind of confirmation of style, though, because clearly this is all meant to be a frozen scene that we're walking around in, because for the first time in either of these games, we're seeing a clear example of stopped motion. Well, this goes back quite a ways. Oh. It's all the security cameras. Oh, what lies in store for us? Is this a cloning facility? Ah, oh, there's a whole lot more guys here than we've been seeing. Ah, uh, and there they are. Alright, let's go have a look. What's in the drawer? Ah, of course. Corporate has figured out that by miniaturizing the equipment and the workers, they can stuff the same building with up to a hundred times as many. And feed them one one hundredth as much. That, that legitimately startled me a little bit. Hey, bud. These office blinds are legitimately quite fun to look through, but I must ask, how are you dividing them in that way? Uh, sadly, I can't get in. You're the office recluse, huh? Have you ever been in one of those offices that has glass, like, all around it, but all of it has these blinds? I mean, when you get inside one of those, close all the blinds, turn out the lights inside, but the lights are still on outside, so that yellow glow is just coming through the slats? Honestly, I could sleep on the floor of one of those things any day. It's so comfortable. Are these... the head honchos? The bosses? The big cheese? I kind of get that vibe from them, given their predatory nature and their two-faced gaze, one seemingly with a friendly face and the other in a snarl. Yep, this is clearly the Jack and Mel powers of this establishment. And these guys almost look like the goon squad ready to break your legs if you come in with bad news. Now here's another example of what looks like an amalgamation of previous models. 
Because here, once again, we've got those yellow scales. And a beak, but it's got, well, I don't know, something about that blue cone and the fact that they're standing guard in the corners kind of reminds me of the red conehead guys that would stand in front of the doors in the apartments on the other map. And I can see this is where they keep all their cans. Maybe they give them out as rewards for when you come with good news. Once again, so bizarre how with so little information I'm able to come up with a whole story around this. But that's what happens when there's enough of a through line between parts. This guy is living the life. Can I join you? Oh, I can. Ah, I don't want to know what this ground paste is made of. I'm assuming it's disobedient employees, but uh, nevertheless, heat it up to about 90 Fahrenheit and it makes for some good hot tubbing. These bears are standing guard. Uh, thankfully, they appear to be made out of whatever those bushes are instead of the ground meat. Oh! Ah, you guys are hiding a secret. Uh, should I check it out some more? Ah, uh, who am I kidding? Of course I should. There's a whole underground. Oh, what is this, Wolfenstein 3D? We can come up on the other side. Okay, I wasn't aware we were coming up on Haunted Castle Incorporated. Or maybe this is just the headquarters of Spirit Halloween. Here to snag up all this free real estate. Oh, this is actually like a church. But being as we're underground, there's nothing but concrete outside the windows. Are you the sole parishioner? Actually, the texture in windows is making me think church, but the layout is actually more like a train. Now there's an image idea, church train. Honestly, that's probably a thing that exists. Hello, this looks like another security camera feed, but it's like it's at the window door to like a padded cell or something that's rusted around the edges of the window. And this appears to be the opposite side of the room with the bosses. Maybe there's something we can figure out from that. What about over here? You know, oddly enough, we still have not come into contact with the staircase to the other house. Ooh, there's... Ooh, my exploration is rewarded. Just shoved into this far corner. Something you wouldn't even see if you weren't paying attention. Oh, what is all this? Is this where they store all the coffee beans? Oh, it's one of the beak guys! It's one of the beak guys from, uh, from Cement Mixer! Uh, along with other... odd and disturbing creatures. Oh, this is actually a hint. I think this is hinting that you can go down between the bears and the garden. And this is probably a clue as well. Are you the guy in charge of typing up all the cryptic things. More office drones. Anything to see here? More weird... What can vaguely be interpreted as beings? <laughs> uh, these guys always startle me when they appear to be doing something active. Uh, what are you running for? Now, this is odd. There seems to be, like, it seems like some kind of lunch hall, but, like, there's a religious angle to it, almost like they're saying grace while eating. It's a weird thing to see in an office environment. This one is clearly deceased. This one's throwing up, and a couple of them are throwing up, and this one's running out. Are they doing, like, some kind of 
religious suicide that only the priest was privy to? That's a disturbing scene. And it seems like this guy got out just in time. Or had a well-timed bathroom break. And these guys are just having loads and loads of fun. Although I'd hate to be on the receiving end of a hit from that cactus. I can't make any form of sense of that, but once again, as with everything, I feel as though it means something. Nice graffiti. Wait, it's you! That's the same creature that was on some of the pendants that were on the ground throughout Cement Mixer Simulator. However, oddly enough, there was never one on any of the doors. I believe we also found another one in the tent in the apartment. This game is definitely spiritually linked to Cement Mixer because we're seeing so much cross imagery. In some cases we're seeing the exact same imagery, and in some cases it's like we're seeing it mixed and merged with new imagery. Uh, you have just 100% like stopped working Windows error noise. It's more of that purple water from the Dark World. I can't help but feel that one of these has got to be a level transition. I'm almost scared to walk through some of these things, mainly because I want to pay the snake bosses another visit. Remember, those security cameras showed something going on behind them, like there's more to them behind the wall. Hello, drones. Ah, how do you guys get in there? Another one hiding. Yeah, man, I don't know. It's going crazy out there. Do you have room for two? What do you think they're saying? Huh. Oh, this one's destroyed a camera, taking it right off the ceiling. And this guy's lying in the back on the phone, clearly not appreciating the gravity of the situation. It's almost like there's some weird religious aspect to this workplace that only some of them have caught on to. One which aims to sacrifice them and possibly turn them into the meat that's in those cans? I don't know, there's just something really sinister about these things and how closely they guard them. Anything over here? Uh, it's this game, of course there is. Oh! That guy across the way is peering through into this guy's room. And this appears to be some kind of marked diagram. A diagram of what? Who knows? Uh, once again, it's doing that thing where it leaves just enough breadcrumbs to make you think there's meaning in something that may be meaningless. A few of those diagrams correspond to things that we've seen, and some of them don't. But given that set of information and lack of information, it makes you think there must be something we're not getting. Oh, this is what the camera was looking at. Uh, but where's the camera? Can we get them aligned? That's... There we go, close enough. Oh, it's like they're sitting in those weirdly colored trees, or at least colored along the fringe. Uh, but what am I supposed to get from that? Uh, there's like, it feels like there's so much meaning packed into that image and I just can't figure out what it is. Maybe it's related to that twisting colored graffiti that we saw in a previous room, but I couldn't tell you what that connection is. Couldn't even speculate. What is this? Oh, this is where the, the underground comes out. Ah, this guy is living the life. Just chilling out in the company garden, I see.
Ah, a maze of file cabinets. I suppose you gotta do something with all that boredom. What are these? Oh, these are like miniature models of all the structures we've seen. Uh, this looks like the building we saw down below the ice in the snow area. These are obviously the houses. You're in the process of making them all. And some of these we haven't seen, meaning there must still be more to explore. Hello. Uh, staging a bit of a revolution, are we? Oh no, you're actually still doing your work, just in a most unconventional fashion. Oh, we haven't been to this area. Wait. I hadn't noticed because the ground is purple, but these are the shapes of freshly dug graves. Are these some of the ones that partook of the meat during that ceremony in the dining hall? And it seems there's a, a fresh funeral going on for... Oh, what better way to complete the office drone commentary than to have them literally be buried atop stacks of balled up paper inside a file cabinet? Hello? Are you hiding, or...? <gasps> now you've got a little bit more of a snarl than the other ones. Are you one of the enforcers laying in wait for some hapless employee to come snooping around for some of that delicious meat? I'm starting to think that... Maybe that religious ceremony is meant to kind of be a commentary on how people sacrifice their physical and mental health in the name of work. Huh. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, huh? Everybody's just waiting for you to finally snap so they can all tackle you. Huh. Another mural, but this one seems a little bit more hopeful than the others. Well, I mean, look at this guy. He's doing the Superman pose. He's proud. I guess a little bit of creativity shines through in here in some places. Ah, and they've totally cast their work aside. The typewriter is knocked off the table and the garbage can tipped over. This is the real rebellion. I bet this staircase leads, yes, up into my basement. So we finally connected the dots as far as this goes. It's actually kind of incredible because, with nothing really up there, on the surface it doesn't look like a large space, but underground in this labyrinth series of corridors and doorways and underground staircases, it all feels so huge, like I almost, for as straightforward as it looks, I almost can't tell how it all connects. Uh, for example, right now I need to find that. That's what I was looking for. Where do these lead? And once again, that purple water is down below. Like what we saw in the area with the boardwalks. This, I imagine, is going to be our way out. And we're transported right back here. Is it going to be the same place as before? And once again, the soundtrack goes from something almost relaxing to actually quite foreboding. Not quite evil, but just a little bit more active. Like it's just a little bit more engaging and therefore tense. Like it's almost like downplayed chase music. I really don't enjoy that sound. It sounds so much like a choir boy. It just strikes me as vocals, and sudden vocals, after all this, do not like. 
Oh, I can't lead through here either. Maybe if I try making my way towards the towers? Maybe that'll get me somewhere. Oh, there's a whole lot over there, actually. Yeah, that goes up to that flower on the rock. And this goes over here to a new structure that we've yet to see. But we did see the miniature being worked on in the office. Let's go see, shall we? Oh, it's like an old dump of a barge docked in port. Maybe we can get up to that wheel? Oh, that's a corpse. Ah. Uh, it's like a rotted turnip corpse. That seems to be an eye in the middle, but it's almost like the broken egg on the table and the goop spilling out is filling in for the implied gore. Anything else on this boat? You know, one of these weird snowmen held up by straws appears to have gotten in and eaten the crew like some kind of kaiju. What does that look like from the inside? Why does this look like the kind of room where when you walk in, the door closes behind you and doesn't open ever again? <gasps> oh. any, any humanoid figure appearing suddenly in my peripheral vision is going to be enough to scare the absolute bejesus out of me. I commented in the, uh, in the video for Cement Mixer that that game felt like the creepypasta game experience where it had this innocuous title and innocuous store page, but then you got on and it was just throwing all this weird stuff at you that seemed different every time you restarted. I feel like I have to once again come back to that mindset of this feeling almost like a haunted game. At least in some ways. I think not so much to the extent... Not so much to the same extent as Cement Mixer, but, I mean, look at this. We're presented with these almost angelic-looking figures. Only now, as we continue down these halls, we start to see them in more progressively deformed states. Almost like they looked beautiful before, but now that outer shell, that egg, if you will, to call back to the imagery on the deck, is cracking open to reveal the writhing mass of worms and grossness inside. Uh, what are you? Like some kind of snowman spider narwhal. We can go down into the water. <laughs> I don't like the way you're looking at me. Uh, something about the way that it's sitting and staring. You know, those skinny arms and legs and tiny feet. And it's almost like a creepy child sitting on the counter when you turn on the lights to your kitchen in the morning. What is that noise? And why is the music picking up? What's happening? Oh, please tell me that's just gonna be the music resetting. That was so creepy. I felt like I had intruded and something was actually going to happen. I mean, at this point, I'm so used to running into still figures that at this point, if any of them moves, I'm going to be so beyond freaked out. It looks like there's, like, colored material that you get from these eggs. Oh, you actually have... You're looking in both directions. It's like your head is gouged out on either side. Ah, oh, you do have a front-facing view. Ah, oh, you guys just keep getting weirder and weirder the more I look at you. But yeah, on to the idea of these different colored goops coming out of the eggs. Much like a dream, it's like you almost can piece together, like, how each of these worlds works. Now we can't get down below. 
like there is almost some internally consistent logic even if you can't understand what it is you can at least understand that there is one or at least it very much seems like there is one but I still can't leave this way. I would love to set sail and see what's out there, but actually, I kind of wouldn't. Through here, this has got to be it, right? This has got to be it. Yes, okay. And we're back here. Okay, so the connectivity is actually the same. Meaning... We can actually learn to navigate this world. Now, strangely enough, I'm now realizing these weird mollusk things actually seem to come in pairs, always working in tandem. With one organism running through the center. Can I make it over to this one? No, I can't actually jump that way. Wait, I'm stuck. Oh, I'm completely stuck. No. There we go. Okay, so resetting level only resets the area that we're in. So it is actually a defense against getting stuck. I feel like more games could stand to have that. I mean, it used to be more of an issue than it is in modern games. But I really think a lot of games could stand to have a thing where you just go into the options, click Unstuck, and every area has a designated point that it'll just teleport you to. I don't believe we ever quite finished seeing what was in the snow area, so I'm going to do a little bit more exploring here. Ah, I'm rewarded right away for coming back at the start. Staircase going down in what seems to be some kind of... Well, I don't know what this is. It's almost like these guys would have been hanging from these chains. Uh, there may be some hanging there right now. Just off screen. What's down these stairs? Oh, we can actually look out over the edges of the cliff. Ah, I was correct. It seems like these guys are associated with images of torture. Wait. Ah, oh, there's a weird symbol on the back wall there. And there. Ah, oh, it's like some being inside has dissolved into goop. Wait, is- wait, does that mean that- that the purple ocean is actually the goop from dissolved corpses? How many would it take to make that happen? Alright, back in. Oh, we've stumbled onto a dark new area. It's like a completely ashen wasteland, but with weird pools of, like, reflective color. Running down from some kind of spout? Yeah, some kind of dinosaur-like creature in the middle, which is actually reflected in color in this substance. Oh, this has to be based on dreams. It has to be. How else would these images just come to you? I don't like it when I enter somewhere and things start sounding different. Maybe I can hop my way up there? Come on. No. I can't quite make it. These almost look like some kind of calcified bones.
That sounded like a cough. Okay, well now I'm going to be more than a little bit paranoid of some figure walking about, watching me at the edge of the darkness. They pour these reflective substances down on the ground underneath objects of interest so that they'll have a colorful reflection, but why? Uh, certainly a lot more depth to this than Cement Mixer. The last thing I want right now is to get lost. What is this? I have a feeling my way out is going to be up there, but I've got to search around. Who knows what strange things might be out in the darkness. Oh my gosh, it's like a whole legion of stone animals being given color by this substance. Uh, but then again, the context and the general eeriness of this place gives me the feeling that these aren't statues, but things that were once living. Well, it's almost like that one place in Return to Oz. Those of you who've seen that movie know what I'm talking about. That was such a messed up movie. I'm going to have to talk about it on the channel at some point. It's like an 80s sequel to The Wizard of Oz where Dorothy ends up coming back to Oz to, you know, go on a whole new adventure. But it is so unnecessarily scary to where, like, okay, so it starts off. Dorothy's back in Kansas, right? She told everyone about her adventures in Oz for which she is dubbed insane and is sent to an asylum to receive electroshock therapy. I am not kidding. They have her being carted through the halls, being hooked up to all kinds of machinery, while you can hear, like, the wails of the condemned echoing through the halls. Your reflection is a bit different. Those are unmistakably vocals, and vocals that I almost sound... that almost sound like they're coming from the back of my head. I think in there is probably going to be a level transition. I'm just gonna go back and see what's up those stairs, and we'll check this out. Oh, it's a whole forest of these things. <laughs> what was that? Okay, so there's just regular, like, sounds being mixed in with the soundtrack now. Oh, what's up here? Oh, <laughs> dessert! <laughs> That's the most normal-looking thing we've seen this entire playthrough. Uh, it's gotta be a trap. Looks like somebody already took a bite out of this, uh... Carrot cake? I have to wonder, is this the likeness of the being that... I could have sworn... I mean, maybe it was just something weird with the colors. There is a bit of a weird gradient here. Uh, but I could have sworn I just saw something almost like the silhouette of a bird fly out from the side. And maybe I'm just insane. Maybe I'm just seeing things because this area has me so freaked out. But I get the impression that this is the likeness of whatever creature stole the life from this place. And we're back in the Winter Wonderland. It's finally time to find out whether this is actually a transition. No. Which, as with most things, just leaves me walking away wondering what it means. Let's have a look around the back of the Frozen Wonderland. Ah, oh, I should have known we'd be seeing another one of you. I kind of thought you were my ticket off that deserted island, but it seems you found yourself in a similar position. Well, don't look at me for help. 
I think by now we've seen just about everything there is to see in the snowy area. But I just can't stop thinking about that house down in the cave, and how there has to be something down there. Oh, look, you can practically see the glow from lights on in the windows. It looks so comfy and cozy down there, doesn't it? The only thing I can think, if there is any way to get down there, is that it must have something to do with those planks with the drawings on them, but I can't find any kind of level transition in that area. It all just looks so cozy, having your candlelit winter cabin down there amidst a frozen winter forest, but you step outside and you look up, and you're so out of the way as to be literally at the bottom of a frozen lake. Only there's no water, just the icy sheet above you, ensuring that nothing will ever find you. It's like the maximum possible amount of solitude and coziness. Uh, there's got to be some way to get down there. Come on, take me down there. There's got to be some way. There's got to be something. Uh, this is the one thing that I'm leaving and thinking, come on, there has to be more to this. Oh! Oh! oh, so there are actual scares. It only took two hours to start finding them. I was just on my way back to the beginning so I could do my outro. I did not need that. I had gotten so sure that nothing was going to happen. Hello? What happens if I continue to hug the edge? More of you, but I can't quite make out what you are. You're so weird. It's like there's detail, but nothing I can recognize. And so my brain is just kind of filling in features that may or may not actually be what they appear. <sighs> Alright, well, uh, let's find that head so we can jump into its gaping maw and get out of here. Although, what about... will something different appear behind it? No, but I did just hear that cough again. Something which I do not even slightly like. I feel like this is designed to be... the anxiety world. Because it's got all these weirdly mixed, j just random sounds, like a cough or papers shuffling in the soundtrack. And it's all so realistically mixed that it sounds like it's happening all around you. Meanwhile, you've got the static noise that just slowly builds in intensity as you make your way around these fields of calcified animals. Whatever, I'm out. You know, this rabbit kind of takes on a different tone now that we've seen the big head in the other world. Looks kind of similar, doesn't it? Oh, and from the other side of the river, we can get in on the other side of the elephant's head. And here we see a complete brickwork of what we saw in the other place. It actually forms the image of an elephant. Yeah, this is it. This is the incomplete one, actually in the other elephant in the next area. Interesting. So that was Hendicad, and like Cement Mixer, 
Ah, such a surreal piece, but such an interesting one. Once again, without actually having any kind of spoken or written dialogue or anything like that, it's incredible how just having the same repeat images causes you to kind of come up with all these stories just to try and make sense of it all, even if you're not consciously trying to. Uh, I really enjoyed this, and let me know if you did as well. Uh, of course, if you want to try this for yourself, the link will be down below in the description. And you know, I, I think I actually like this one better than Cement Mixer, if only because it was a little bit kinder to my analytical brain. Of course, it's fairly easy to see the commentary and having these sprawling, repetitive, soulless offices directly under people's houses where the workers kind of give everything they have, including possibly literally being ground up for meat and buried in office cabinets, being forced to have almost a religious devotion to the job. Yeah, the commentary there is pretty clear, but for the rest of it, it almost does feel like things that someone might see in a dream. And there's not really... I don't think there were any places that I wanted to go to but couldn't. Of course, with a major notable exception of that cabin under the ice, which, guys, if you know a way to get down there, please let me know, because I really want to check it out. And also tell me if there's anything else that I missed. I thought I was pretty thorough, but... Actually... This worked in the dark area. What happens if we decide to just wander out into the void? Wow, this actually goes on for a long, long ways. But it almost looks like we might be reaching some kind of edge on our left here. Ooh! What was that? Wait. Oh, we're back here. Oh, that was really weird. Oh, well, anyway. If you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you'd like me to do, the best place to do that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this out for yourself, that link will also be down in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.